Hello everyone, welcome back to Apparently, Dr. Boyd here. Today we're going to talk about the difficult diagnosis, severe preeclampsia. Now this is several videos that I've talked about preeclampsia because of the complexity of the disease. As I've mentioned in other videos, this is a pregnancy specific condition. It's multi-organ process can be very dangerous for both you and your baby. Multi-organ, in other words, it affects your uterus, the growth of your baby, it affects your kidneys, it affects your heart, it can affect your brain. Women can have seizures and die from their seizures. They can have pulmonary embolisms, blood clots to their heart or their lungs, or they can have strokes and subsequently die from that. Now the good news is most women do not develop severe preeclampsia. But for those specific women that do, knowing what to do, how it's diagnosed is of utmost importance. Now, most women don't go from having no preeclampsia to having severe preeclampsia overnight. Usually it's a process. But that process can occur fairly quickly in some women. Again, it doesn't happen overnight, but it can happen over a week or two. So knowing what to be looking for as a pregnant woman at home or into the office with discussion with your healthcare provider, it's important to know what to look for and what to mention to your healthcare provider. The definition of severe preeclampsia, it's a blood pressure of 160 over 110 after 20 weeks of gestation. Now, it's important to separate women that have chronic hypertension, that means elevated blood pressure prior to 20 weeks, and women that have elevated blood pressure of 160 over 110 after 20 weeks. We don't want to deliver women that have chronic hypertension early. We do want to deliver women that have blood pressures of 160 over 110 when that diagnosis is made. So the second diagnosis of severe preeclampsia is proteinuria in massive amounts. I mentioned in the mild preeclampsia lecture that it's 300 milligrams or greater in mild preeclampsia, but in severe preeclampsia, it's 5,000 milligrams or five grams in a 24 hour period of time. Further things that you can see is decreased urine output from your kidneys, usually less than 500 cc's per day. Women that have severe preeclampsia oftentimes will have headaches and they can be severe. They will have blurred vision or they'll have floaters that they diagnose things that they're seeing in their peripheral or in their main vision. They can have epigastric pain. That means pain mid uh, abdomen here right below your sternum. Epigastric pain is similar to heartburn, but it's usually more intense. As the liver swells, women will have increasing pain that migrates to the right side where your liver is located. Swelling of the liver will cause abdominal pain and it can be severe. Also, when we check laboratory values, we will see elevations of your liver enzymes. Now, after we come to the diagnosis of preeclampsia, or if we're still trying to assess whether you have preeclampsia, we will perform a menagerie of labs. We will assess whether you are suffering from HELP syndrome. HELP syndrome is an acronym that means hemolysis. That's the H part. That means the breaking down of your red blood cells. Elevated liver enzymes, and that's due to the swelling of the liver. That's EL. And then low platelets. Platelets are the factor in your blood that help you from bleeding to death. So if you're breaking down your red blood cells, that's the hemolysis part of it, then your platelets rush to that area and try to stop the bleeding. That consumes your platelets, so your platelets are going to decrease. So the acronym HELP syndrome is a severe variant of severe preeclampsia and mandates immediate delivery. And it should be delivery in a high-risk hospital that can manage you after your baby's born. Now, once the severe diagnosis 
of preeclampsia is made, we need to move forward with delivery. You should be in the hospital at this time. If we can deliver you vaginally in a timely fashion by induction of labor, that's what we prefer. Because of the risk for bleeding, the fact that you have low hemoglobin because your red blood cells are being destroyed and your platelets are being decreased, those are the clotting factors. We do not want to put you through surgery if we don't have to. So that's why vaginal delivery is preferential. But that is only going to be the decision maker if vaginal delivery can be imminent within a time period that the healthcare provider feels comfortable. In other words, sometimes inductions of labor will take several days, even up to a week. If you're so sick that we're worried about you bleeding, we want to move toward delivery at a quicker fashion. Vaginal delivery then oftentimes can slow things down and take several days. That scenario then would push you toward a cesarean section. Again, it has risk factors because of the risk for bleeding. But if we feel that delivery needs to occur quickly, sometimes cesarean section is the only way to move forward. Now, the good news is after delivery occurs, whether it's by cesarean section or by vaginal delivery, usually reversal of the severity of your preeclampsia occurs fairly quickly. Now, fairly quickly can vary from patient to patient. Sometimes it's immediate. Within one or two days, we start seeing improvement of your laboratory values, your urine output, your kidney function. Some patients take longer to reverse their course. Those patients will be monitored in a closer fashion, oftentimes in an ICU setting. Again, it's important that you're in a hospital that feels comfortable managing you in this very high-risk scenario. The other patient that I wanted to mention is your baby. In the severe preeclamptic patient, because your blood supply to your placenta is decreased because your blood pressure is so elevated, that means your baby is not going to get adequate blood supply to their body. Remember, the placenta is the gateway from you as the patient to your baby. In a severe preeclamptic patient, the blood supply to the baby will decrease. That means their oxygen is going to decrease. That will stress them. So that obviously getting that patient delivered, your baby, is of utmost importance in that timely fashion. So today we've talked about severe preeclampsia. This is a difficult diagnosis, and I hope you as a patient never get to this point. Unfortunately, as I mentioned in the mild preeclamptic video, 5 to 7% of all women will develop preeclampsia. And in that 5 to 7% group, there's a small percentage that will become severe. Those women need to understand what their future holds. I hope this was helpful. Have a good day.